Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Expedition Portal and Overland Journal, and I have been driving a very fun concept vehicle. This is the Jeep Grand Wagoneer Overland Edition. Mark Allen and his team of designers have been building the most exceptional concept vehicles for decades. In fact, one of the very first vehicles that we ever had at Overland Journal was the Jeep JK Overland. And since then, Jeep has added model after model that's very appropriate to our space. What's first and most important to talk about is the Grand Wagoneer. The Grand Wagoneer is not just a slightly larger Grand Cherokee. This is actually built on the half-ton Ram pickup line. So this is a body-on-frame construction. It's designed for heavy payload and heavy towing capability. This vehicle has 500 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque easily moving this vehicle along both the trail and the highway. So this Grand Wagoneer Overland concept vehicle is designed specifically to meet the needs of vehicle-based adventure travelers. So let's start right from the front where we have a heavy-duty Warren winch. They've actually 3D printed this whole entire grill insert and have a high clearance bumper that incorporates the hidden winch and also incorporates four laser lights. These are heavy-duty high output LEDs that are right in the bumper. Moving a little bit further back, we can take advantage of that four corner airbag suspension system. This is a long travel, long control arm, independent front and rear airbag system that allows for two off-road height settings in addition to just the normal mode. Okay, so this Grand Wagoneer isn't just a pretty overland face. It actually has a bunch of hardware underneath that helps support it in the backcountry. So we can see from this screen that the vehicle has a rear locking differential and a center locking differential. This is a full-time transfer case, all-wheel drive vehicle. It'll show the steering angle here on the screen, and then you can move through your accessory gauges, which I find to be very helpful. It'll show your pitch and roll on the trail. And then it'll also show whatever terrain select mode you're in. Right now we're in rock. We can move into sand and mud. And then into snow. Which changes a bunch of the attributes of the vehicle. So it'll change the suspension height. It'll change the gear selection, etc. So we're gonna move back into rock mode. And then on the suspension we can see how much the vehicle is articulating, and we can also see what suspension height that the vehicle is in. So you can see we're moving from off-road one into off-road two to correspond with rock mode. I also like the fact that it shows latitude and longitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds. And it also shows our current altitude at 6,100 feet. One of the interesting features you can now get with Jeeps is the breadcrumbs feature, which allows you to record your trail as you're going along. So it's recording the track and it will export as a GPX file. The taller tires, these are 35 inch diameter BF Goodrich mud terrains on 18 inch wheels. They already provide about an inch and a half of additional lift over or ground clearance over the stock vehicle. Then you can go into off-road height one or off-road height two, gaining several more inches of available ground clearance. Clearance on the trail has really not been an issue with this vehicle. It's really just limited by the overall dimensions, the overall size of the truck. And that airbag suspension system allows for a bunch of other benefits to the Overlander. So when we load up the rear of the vehicle with payload, it will automatically adjust the height. If we were to put a heavy duty trailer behind it or an Overland trailer behind it, then it's gonna automatically adjust to the tongue weight. So it really makes a difference on the trail, keeping that vehicle at maximum ground clearance despite the payload that you have inside of it. Those 35 inch diameter tires surprisingly fit on this vehicle with really very little modification. But the one modification that they made to the body that I'm most happy to see is the adjustment of the wheel well height. It was always my criticism of the Grand Wagoneer from a design perspective that the wheel well openings are just too low on the belt line. So by raising those wheel well openings and adding these larger fender flares, it really makes the vehicle look a lot more athletic. It allows for a much larger diameter tire 
and I think it looks much more appropriate to the entire platform. It's literally revolutionized the way that the Grand Wagoneer looks as an off-road vehicle. On the top of the vehicle, we have a red tail overland carbon fiber hard-sided roof tent. This is one of the few hard-sided roof tents that are available on the market. And it's almost all made from composites and includes full-length windows. But these roof tents are quite heavy. They integrate a lot of different systems, including a roof fan and a bunch of other accessories into these roof tents. So they need to be fitted to full-size SUVs or the new Land Rover Defender, a vehicle that can take that 300 plus pounds of roof load rating. And the Grand Wagoneer is having no trouble doing that. It's Brian McVickers with Expedition Portal and Overland Journal. Now we've taken a good look at the outside of this vehicle and we've talked a lot about its capability and its features. Now we're gonna really look at the inside and take a look at what Jeep has created for that elevated camping experience as an Overland vehicle. So on the inside, you'll notice that they have removed the back passenger seats and the third row seats. They've bedlined the inside of the vehicle, removed a lot of the seating bracketry, and they've complemented it with a very large bean bag, several pillows, a small table that actually doubles as storage. So this area can be used as a, as a lounge at camp, and it's very modular in the sense that it's, it's open space design, so it's perfect for bags, boxes, duffel bags. So as you're going on individual trips, you can put your things in here, take them out when you're at camp, get in here, lounge on the bean bag, maybe watch a movie on the back screen of the TV. And it's just a little bit different approach. Uh, it's almost like having a studio loft at camp. Another great thing about this concept that Jeep has brought to us is you can go from the driver's seat, crawl over, be in the loungy beanbag chair. And then from here, we can go right up, we can open the tent, or if the tent's already open, we can go through the access panel, which is actually the second or rear sunroof of the Grand Wagoneer. So they removed the sunroof, and now we have a pass-through to come right up into the tent. You can do a step and a boost, and you're right up into the tent. So we've got this studio lounge atmosphere on the inside of the vehicle. And to enhance that experience even further, they've equipped this Grand Wagoneer with the new Redtail Overland Skyloft, which is a handmade carbon fiber hard shell rooftop tent. In fact, it's hardly a tent. They actually refer to it as a rooftop penthouse or a rooftop cabin. So the Redtail Overland Skyloft is the only hard-sided rooftop tent on the market. It's made in Longmont, Colorado. It's hand fashioned out of carbon fiber. You'll have wood trim and nice fabric on the inside. On the outside of the tent, they've got lighting on the back and the two sides. So it's LED lighting that's embedded and recessed within the tent. So it's not gonna snag or get damaged on the trail and it's controllable by your phone. So you're able to be driving along, pull into camp, and while you're still in the driver's seat, you can turn on your camp lighting. As we move around the tent, you're gonna see heavy duty billet aluminum mounting brackets that integrate directly with just about any vehicle or roof rack. You're also gonna notice that it has 380 amps of solar panels on top, which feed into a 60 amp hour battery that's built into the, the tent. So on the back wall of the tent, you'll notice that there is a double pane glass window that opens for full ventilation, incredible views, so you can enjoy the best of the environment that you're camping in. The side walls also open up. They're held open by two pistons. All of the walls and windows are lockable. So when you're in the tent, you can feel nice and secure. It has two other windows up front on each corner, and it has a high flow electric fan built into the roof for extra ventilation. So the roof of the Skyloft can accommodate up to 380 watts of solar panels, which powers a 60 amp battery that's built into the tent. 
Now this also accommodates several USB ports, 110 volt outlets, and a couple of 12 volt outlets that are also built in. There's white and red dimmable lighting recessed into the roof. And then there's mood lighting that accents the interior as well. In addition to the insulated carbon fiber panels, the Skyloft features a built-in diesel heater to help take the edge off in the cold nights. And it's actually very cool how they set this vehicle up because by removing the second and third row of seating, they gain back hundreds and hundreds of pounds of payload. So this vehicle, even with the heavy roof tent on the top, the larger diameter tires and all the additional accessories, I suspect that it is close to the stock vehicle weight rating or curb weight. So you could even add a big off-road trailer behind it, or you could carry a whole bunch of additional gear with you. This is a very fun overland vehicle. We've had such a good time, not only driving it and testing it on the road and off-road, but it's completely recalibrated my interest and expectation around the Grand Wagoneer.